I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, these things I'm sharing with you, they are so, so important. If you listen attentively and I, like I always tell you, ask the Holy Spirit concerning these things. Because the essence is to make you intelligent. I'm telling you, to make you intelligent in the things concerning God's provision and finances. Now, the world have their system, but we also have our system. If you don't master God's system, you will crash in the world. I'm telling you the truth. Because what we do is we master God's system that we manifest to the world. But the people of the world, they they have their system, they manifest their system in the way they can. But you see, the one who's ruling that system over there is the devil. He's the god of this whole financial system that you see. So you see borrowing, you see, you know, all those kind of things. And, and he gives the long group and then you, you, you are enjoying everything. And then one day, just a government policy that changes, throws you out. One day, a, 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 a president or a governor or a king that doesn't like you comes in and you're gone. Just one policy they bring out and your business is gone. How many have lost it because of such things? But the Bible says anyone who does the will of God abides forever. Any body who does God's way, God's principles of finances, his business will abide forever, simply put. So are you ready to call for your delivery? That's part of God's system. See that now? So let's pray. Join me as we declare this. We'll say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Woo! You know, thank you, Lord Jesus. Many things in my spirit to share with you. Can we just bless the Lord? Father, thank you. All these words you are bringing out has been such a blessing to our spirits. And our souls have been enriched and educated properly, even according to your truth. Thank you, precious Lord Jesus. We give you praise today for your manifold grace and wisdom being poured out upon us. Thank you. And I declare right now, every body is lifted, every yoke is destroyed. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. So I'll show you scripture in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 12 yesterday. Listen. The purpose, why God, you know, I told you something yesterday. Why am I emphasizing on tithing? I'll tell you why. The reason is tithing is not a free will giving. You need to understand this. Like every other free will giving, tithing is not a free will giving. It is a command from the Lord that you shall tithe everything. Now, you know, um, sometimes we have people who do, uh, it's part of the law. So because it is part of the law, listen to me <laughs> and, and listen good. There is the law. Then there is the wisdom of the law. The wisdom of the law is the voice behind the law. So if you dwell on the law, you can start arguing. But if you know the voice behind the law, it will end your argument because it will bring, that voice will bring about understanding. 
you see so for example lawyers can go to court and argue issues that are based on the law but sometimes when certain lawyers are arguing even a layman will look at this lawyer and say you're a corrupt man why because you should understand the spirit of the law you should understand why this law was made in the first place like a lawyer going out there to defend a criminal, to defend a murderer. Yeah, everybody knows this guy committed this murder. And then suddenly, the lawyer is telling him, look, when, when you are asked guilty or not guilty, plead not guilty, I'll, I'll free you, I'll, I'll bring you out. How? I'm going to use technicalities. Now, he goes beyond speaking about whether this guy committed the crime or not. He's now going about the way the case was filed was not proper. So because of that, the case should be thrown away. And then the judge looks at the matter and he's bound by the law. And I say, well, he's actually right. You were supposed to have done this at this time and done this at this time. So because of that, I throw your case out. And then they all smile out of that court. The criminal is smiling out of that court like, I'm a free man. I'm a free man. And everybody is looking at him. You see, that lawyer went to school quite all right. But you see, he has applied his brain to encourage evil. You understand what I'm saying? Now, because, yes, the law was made. And then he's looking for loopholes in the law. Now, imagine they do that in normal society. Now, imagine Christians doing that with God's word. Looking for loopholes in the law and not making up their minds to understand the voice behind the law. So when God says you shall tithe everything, now that's not just a command. That is a command with a reason, with a purpose. Has the purpose changed? No. See? So that's why I'm bringing all these things up. So God instituted tithing to meet the needs of his children everywhere so when we tie it right that is exactly what we're doing and and because it is a command that's why god can actually come up in in in, in malachi and say you have robbed me and say how did we rob you in tithes and offerings why because i commanded this thing so if you don't do it you owe me. If you don't do it, you are breaking the law. So any believer who doesn't tithe is breaking the law. Now, let me tell you this. It goes beyond breaking a code. It goes beyond breaking a law. You know, so, so what will happen? God will punish me or God will beat me. No, listen, listen, listen. When you don't tithe, and, and now importantly, when you don't even tithe right, I'll tell you what, God is bringing a blessing to you. And when he was doing that, he was thinking of Mr. A, B, C that are going to benefit from that blessing that he brings to you. And what God will hold on to is the tight. You know why? Because every other thing is free will giving. If God tells you, look, I want you to help that person. And you say, no, if your no stands. Because it's a plea, and God can never punish you for that. See that now. He can never punish you for that. You will only miss the part where he would have to say to you, thank you. But you see, the tithe, if you don't give the tithe, you are holding back God's money. And you see, if God wanted that tithe, to get to Mr. A and Mr. B and Mr. C. And then you hold it back. Now, this is what happens. Those people that God have intended to bless with it, their cry always going before him becomes a judgment for you. You see, because you don't relate with God closely, you may not understand this. I remember one day, you know, I, I we were doing some projects in our, in our, in our office. And for a while, 
money was stalled. And I'll never forget, so I, I, I came to the office that night because we needed to do some more work. I'm like, Lord, money hasn't been coming in. What's going on? Because we, we can't stop here now. We have to finish this work. And while I was praying in the spirit and asking God for his wisdom, Lord, you now I'll just pray like Barokos. And suddenly, you know, I looked up. And when I looked up, I heard the voice of the Lord say to me, you are owing. I like me owe? Never. How? How can I owe? <laughs> I don't owe as a principle. And I said, yes, you are owing. I said, who am I owing? So I looked. Then I remembered the, the guy who did the electrical work for us. You know, he, someone had taken up that responsibility as an offering, as a seed. And so I didn't follow up how. And one time the guy had complained, the electrician that did the job had complained to me concerning the person, but, but he didn't go into details. So when the Lord said this to me, I had to call. I said, okay, hold on. I called the guy. I said, come. Um, are we owing you for the work you did in this place? And then he said, yes. I said, really? He said, yes. How much is it? I said, I said okay, um, let, me, let me call the person I was supposed to give you the money. So I called that person up and he said eh, that there was some argument, blah, 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 blah. And I said, listen, you bet I'm giving you till midnight today to pay that money. If not, if not that you had promised and I have to allow you, you know, obey God fully, who would have gone ahead to pay that money? But because you had promised, let me allow you fulfill your promise. But you see, I'm giving you till midnight to fulfill that promise. And boy, guess what? The following morning, the windows were opened again and money started coming. See? And that's the intelligence I'm talking about working relationship not sitting down here wondering what do we do what strategy do we come up with to raise money what's that if money stops coming i know what to do i go before the one who sends the money normally see so so now you see when you are in this kind of relationship you begin to understand things people generally don't understand now how how do you connect with someone being owed and you it been affecting you how do you connect that it's only the holy spirit that can teach you stuff like that and and to prove that what he said was true the moment we got that sorted out the windows were open again intelligence spiritual intelligence and you sit down there one week two weeks three weeks one month you're, 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 you're praying for house strength it has not come and you are just there come on that's why i'm teaching you these things get there's something you're not doing right i, I don't mean you know sometimes we say there's something you're not doing i start thinking what sin did i commit did i fornicate did i you know did i steal you, you begin to no 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 you you say god many times will love to get your attention into the truth. So at seasons like that, when things don't seem to be working, there might just be something that you he needs to deal with you on. So he needs your attention. So what do you do? Give him that attention. Go before the Lord and say, Lord, what's going on here? So you see, the tithe belongs to God. If you don't give it, you are robbing him. Robbing him of what? Can you really rob God? That's what God said in the Will a man rob God? Robbing him of what? You don't, you don't de you don't, you don't reduce the amount in heaven in the heaven's bank account. No, you don't reduce it, but this is how you rob God. There is someone crying somewhere and saying that God haven't reached out to him yet. And he's wondering why. But guess what? God has spoken to you. God has put money in your hands. You will not listen to the voice of God. You will not pay attention to the voice of God because every blessing God gives is clearly structured out and clearly planned on how to reach everyone. But because you will not be in position to obey the voice of God, you hold back their blessing. 
and then they cry and their cry turns over to be a judgment against you. I pray you have understanding in these things. Because my time is up today. Sit down, understand this thing, work it out and be free and be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.